Good morning, and this is the Crypto Day Morning. Today's date, well, that is Friday, 16th of November, 2018. Welcome to the Money Charts channel. My name is Derek. All bets, trades of the like, within one's own risk and their own reward. And the pattern of matching lows, lower highs has been changed. That uh, took place on Wednesday as it dipped well below the 5800 to 6100 support range which has been uh perfect until now always perfect till the last actually and then it uh, had a decent move so two sideways consolidation moves that have transpired within the short term time frame we can see that from this fall down here making it to 5300 it started at nine o'clock the big action took place at 11 and the intraday bottom was three o'clock. Had a sideways consolidation pattern and then decent sized red candle down, three big candles going sideways below the 18 lows and then good red set candle down, but a bigger green candle that has followed and has had continuous momentum ever since. So then we've had resistance pretty much around here. Getting above this level, then quite frankly, we might have a little test next leg would be in the 5800s or so and where it came from is of course in that of around like the 6100 number and oftentimes if you get a change in trend and you break support and resistance do you have a short-term move question mark compared to where you came from maybe it could very easily spend like the next two three days getting up to this point and whether it's a high level of resistance or not, I'm not going to say. Rather, it's never a surprise for me to see action in the area of uh, something like, uh, this goes up like this, and then even down further. That wouldn't be a surprise either way. And of course, I'm still gonna be looking for that of the possible failed breakdown that's going to take place. But for that to be in, in point, in the next week or so, I need this price action to come up and get back to this congestion area, at least up to the 6200 and a bit more on that, and then have that somewhat similar of a look that we see on the single hour time frame, where again, there's a big red candle down and it comes back to, I come back to where it came from kind of area. Now, as far as Bitcoin against uh, the US dollar, 55.59 is the uh, Bitstamp price. The Coinbase price, practically the same, just 36 cents higher. And the Bitfinex is now 56.93. On Wednesday, I reported it moved up to about 5% of a differential, maybe a bit more, 6% even. And now the differential of points is 130 or so, 133. So that works out to a little more than 3%. So not quite as high of a differential as it was before. But as we can see with Bitcoin on the Bitfinex chart, the last two days are, they're not the sideways kind of moves. We can see how this is merely the percentage differential on this chart versus uh, Bitcoin going lower. And it's going to probably remain very volatile, especially with the cross with the TUSD and the USDT. And we can see it's at two and a quarter percent differential in here. But it had risen just this last time up to 1.09. That means that the true US dollar was worth 9.8% more than the tether was at that time. We had the wild move up that occurred in October. So this is a very scary thing to trade in that you basically would buy this when it's in the area of the 18 average of lows and hopefully not much more than a dollar, but you're gonna have to settle for maybe 101 in here as that's where the 18 average of lows is rising to 101.15.
And then when you have these moves, you can sell up here and try to pick away at like six, seven, five, three percent, ten percent moves. Of course, there's only been um, two ten percent moves available. Well, three, I think. No, this wasn't ten percent. Oh, there's only been two ten percent moves available. This one here. This was about a twenty-five percent move going from one to one and a quarter. And this is one up to about 109. So that's basically close to 10%. Again, risky because you could be holding tethers and it could be like musical chairs where if you don't have a chair when the music stops, you lose the game. And if you have tether when the game just explodes, uh, you could lose it all very easily as well. But there's definitely possibilities as long as it doesn't do that for small trades to be profited amongst this uh, crossing. Let's take a look at Lumen. And we'll start it off within the single day time frame, which uh, on the Wednesday session managed to come back down the 18 average of lows. It also came back to this previous level of resistance on October the 20th. And as I was stating on the outset of this or the start of this video, the short term comeback and then the longer term comeback. Well, that's uh, what we have here. Because we can see that on the date of uh, November the 6th, it broke past the uh, cup and handle, double bottom, however you want to look at it, formation within these two uh, U's or lows. And then the very next day, it came back to where it came from. So that's the short term coming back. And then the more longer term was the one from the November 12th top, of course, to last Wednesday on the 14th. But since that point, it has just managed to continue to go higher, get above the 18 average of highs, currently trading at this upper end that has had monstrous levels of resistance. Let's take a look at this next on the three day term time frame. And we have resistance right there. Breaking above, where is the next area we're going? Well, pretty much the next area it's got to get above right there so 4400 or so clearly breaking above that to a little under 5000 differential 500 or so points don't be surprised that there's a decent size candle or a lot fast moves that does happen breaking above to get to this point overall within this pattern this comes after last year's January highs and it has held the uh, uh, March lows thus far very, very well. Close to the April Fool's Rally top, which of course is this line in here, has been maintaining very nice higher lows efficiently along the way. And again, within the three-day chart here, we're seeing good strength too, as it manages to, uh, from the 18 average of lows here, have four consecutive green candles, getting above the highs, come back last period. And this period rising nicely again we've had a lot of resistance test amongst here that getting above there would probably uh, show a, a lot of very interesting cool action and the overall net look at this market is well before this was starting off going down big move higher the may highs last year there's your pullback big move higher and since that point it has basically gotten rather symmetrical as this low is uh, lower than these two and technically this low is lower than this it looks like then you got this low here at the 18 average of lows which was also lower or higher rather so all the higher lows and then what lately has been matching highs but lower highs as well so you got the very symmetrical look that the possibilities of having an extreme move breaking out above these lines in here because the next spot after 49.50 this can go is probably up to around 6,000 but breaking 6,000 this thing could explode in mega proportions and it has done so during of course the rise up in May and then again in November all the way and this one started uh, at this month earlier than all the, all the other altcoins did last time which might be very interesting if it does a, some sort of similar thing again but nice looking pattern on this time frame as well let's finish this off with some NEM and within its weekly term 
So I had big rise higher, big fall, big rise, big fall. And is it ready for another big rise higher again? Question mark. Maybe a lot of times it's not a surprise when it happens, although you're never going to predict when. You would have been saying maybe last October. Oh man, this thing's going to go up big at some point. And that some point didn't happen until, uh, well, it went into February. I know it was two years ago. It, price action has managed to make a move above the 18 average of highs and it's now back down to the 18 average of that. So it got well above it, established resistance to a degree, and it had a comeback. Now to a degree, is that big enough of a move? You know what almost is? Three day term time frame. We can see that the sideways action was stuck in here, had that big move yesterday coming back to where it came from. Looking at this on the daily chart, here's the move. The rally up to 23, breaking all of these levels of resistance. So when I see these moves, that's why I say all the time, okay, where do I need to see it hold above? Well, where do we come from? There's this little area here, which represents this resistance, this resistance which happened to be where it went down to. But generally speaking, around this general area here, so between 1660 and about 1550 is where it needs to hold in my book for me to be optimistic that this is a for real move. And when you get enough time and within well, the element of time where maybe you get like another week where it just stays around this establishes good levels of resistance and then you see thereafter that it breaks that level well that's when you expect to have good moves on the contrary when you have a move like this and you see it failing what it needs to hold which of course is the 18 lows and 1560 you see weakness amongst those areas well, now we're looking at that possibility of the failed breakout, fast move lower. And the difference with NEM and, of course, Lumen is this thing has been in nothing but a large downtrend that if it falls from here, it could just continue clumping its way down to the 2017 lows. That would be another 4x move as a possibility. And if Bitcoin goes down to 3,000, it probably will be on the horizon for something like this to happen, that this will have... Uh, at least a 2x, 3x kind of move against Bitcoin. And of course, when Bitcoin's ready to go, I think, there's going to be a situation where these altcoins are, are just going to go up magnificent again. That I think we're going to be like, in this case, it would be a, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, a sequel, but just a repeat because even back in 2016, this thing went from 381 here up to 2600. And then it goes from 400 or so, but even from this breakout point of 530 up to 13,000. That's about 25x. Some decent moves along the way because you can buy here, sell up here, but from point A to point B. You're going from like around the 15,000, 14,000 handle down to a thousand, so a 14 times reduction. Back close to where you came from, better than a 10x move. It's done uh, close to a 10x decline right now. So the volatility for big moves, where will we say later on again a 20x move, a 30x move, even the 7, 8x moves? Well, you know what? Those don't surprise me to have those events when they're ready to occur to occur and back in here you could have been saying on like September man this thing is going to go up and well sometimes it's just a waiting game for those big moves to transpire but for myself when the big plays happen because it's usually been the same everywhere across the board especially priced against Bitcoin that when the markets have their big moves up, they're going to have their big crashes back afterwards, like every single time, which is why the strategy that I use is part of that type of maneuver to help it work very, very well. So.
for me, protecting profits when the markets have big gains is going to be part of a risk reward management, portfolio management, always job number one. And that's part of the play, the strategy on the big gains because just buying low, selling high on this type of chart. If you were to start it up, say, at like seven, I mean, you should be winning if you were starting to buy on the breakouts at like, say, 6,000 here back in, say, May of 2017. Because you'd start off with some sells, you'd buy down here, you'd sell up here, you'd buy down here, even sell a bit up here, buy a whole bunch here, and then from your last buy order, probably around a thousand, you would have kept selling all the way up, buying all the way down, small sell here on the March rally. Maybe you might get a sell up here, maybe you don't. And I think if you were buying down at the 1400 level, yeah, you should have already had at least one sale, of course, on the session a few days ago. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.